Um, so welcome to uh, this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, the title of this presentation is the uh, Empire Metaverse Roadmap, and it has its subtitle, uh, Functionality Profiles, because this is the second step of, um, uh, of a project that um, uh, this group uh, has developed. So, um, standards for the metaverse. Um, this is something that uh, many people talk about uh, because it's clear that there is an interesting and an interest uh, and that, that um, we see new opportunities, new jobs, uh, qualified jobs, uh, new experiences. Uh, we want uh, the metaverse to be like the web, but uh, this is hard to make it happen if we don't have standards. Um, there are many and disparate customer and industries. This is um, uh, probably one of the uh, biggest problems because uh, um, we can uh, try and achieve interoperability, but it cannot be uh, of the type of one size of its all because uh, what I need is what uh, is what not what necessarily what you need. And so um, I don't want to take the burden of taking um, what I don't need on my implementation. This is not a new problem uh, in standardization. Uh, the fact that, that some technologies are only used by uh, some industries. And uh, MPI is the moving picture audio and data coding by artificial intelligence group uh, that has developed a roadmap that is built on uh, a well-tested approach. Uh, what is the structure of the presentation? So, two words about wh uh, what we are, uh, what we have done, what we plan. Then the um, big talk about uh, interoperability and profiles. Then we have a, a functional operational model. This is going to be a little, a little heavy, but you know, um, we are talking of something that uh, must be implemented. So it cannot uh, just be uh, developed it on thin air. Uh, then uh, action and items is uh, the next uh, topic. Then we have payloads and formats, use cases, then functional profiles, and finally conclusions. Um, of course, uh, if uh, during my presentation you want to make uh, <coughs> uh, ask questions, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to stop me. Uh, in any case, we can have a discussion at the end of, of this presentation. Okay, um, so let me go to the next uh, slides. Um, so we are uh, moving picture audio and data coding by artificial intelligence. <clears throat> we have an international unaffiliated not-for-profit standard developing organization. We develop AI-based data coding standards. Um, with uh, an important addition, which is clear intellectual property right licensing frameworks. Um, another important topic, this is on the technical side, is that uh, our standardization is component-based, uh, which means that if we have an AI application, we subdivide these smaller components, we call AI modules, we aggregate the components in one and more workflows, and we execute it in a standard environment. Uh, of course, uh, you see immediately that uh, by this componentization allows us to reuse uh, um, components and have components uh, uh, from different sources. What have we done so far? Um, so technical specification is TS and technical report is TR. For Then uh, uh, we have developed one foundational technical specification that is called AI framework, uh, what I, I was talking about before. Uh, one on uh, governance of the empire ecosystem and uh, four technical specification and one technical report. Um, one is context-based audio enhancement. Another one is compression and understanding of financial data. Another uh, mouth and mouth conversation, and more recently, neural network watermarking, which is not about the watermarking uh, neural network, but how you measure the, the performance of a, a watermarking technology. And uh, finally, the Empire Metaverse model uh, functionality, which is, is a step one of um, what we will introduce uh, today. Uh, current activities are extending existing standards. 
uh, developing a new standard. One of them is what we are talking uh, about. Uh, this is close to um, to be approved, uh, and we're making this presentation to um, elicit uh, comments from uh, um, all over the world. Then we have six uh, exploratory activities, six venues to bed that I cannot explain what it is, AI health, connected autonomous vehicles, server-based predictive multiplayer gaming, and then two projects on video coding. Finally, it's the fact that uh, we have uh, uh, three of our standards that have been adopted without modification as IEEE standards, and uh, two more that are uh, in the pipeline. So let's go to um, uh, interoperability and profile, which is uh, the first topic uh, strictly related uh, to um, this uh, presentation. So. Um, everybody talks about the metaverse interoperability. It's, uh, it's appropriate that we uh, agree what we mean by this word. So this is an attempt, um, and we um, propose the definition. A metaverse interoperability is the ability of an M instance, and M instance stands for metaverse instance, number one, to use data from and as intended by M instance number two. Mediated interoperability is um, the case when M instance number one requests a conversion service to translate data from instance uh, number two and vice versa. So this is the, the schema. So we have uh, an instance here and another instance here. We connect them directly and uh, that is doable because both rely on the same uh, um, uh, technology set. But we can have the case when um, Metaverse Instant 1 has one specific format and the Metaverse Instant 2 has another. And in that case, we have a format conversion service. And of course, the opposite uh, is also possible. One could think that uh, format conversion service is, uh, is the solution of the problem. Uh, in some cases, it is. It is certainly one component of the solution, but it's not uh, the entire. Uh, if not for other reasons, because a mediated interoperability may not guarantee effective interoperability. Uh, if uh, the data synthesis semantics of uh, M instance number two does not match uh, data synthesis semantics of meta, um, M, M instance number one, this uh, is uh, a problem. So um, then let's see metaverse standards. Um, so developing standards, well, uh, let me say that uh, I, I know a few things about uh, um, developing standards, but this is really a challenging goal because, um, I mean, if I take the case of MPEG, uh, there, the, the work was usually uh, rather, rather simple. Uh, I mean, of course, it was a, 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 every standard is, is, a, is a challenge, uh, but, you know, it, the applications were clear. The object of standardization was well defined. Um, in many cases, there was no significant industry commitment to technology, to a particular technology, and that the technologies were available. Uh, when we developed MPEG 2, I mean, it, it was all there. Nothing was invented by, by MPEG. Uh, but here it's different because. Uh, <clears throat> we have many existing and potential metaverse use cases. So the applications are not at all clear. I mean, we have a core uh, set of applications that we understand, but uh, uh, if you can say that the metaverse, uh, that the idea of metaverse makes everybody happy, that is not true. There is no common understanding of what metaverse is. Uh, I mean, uh, every, many people have different ideas, and uh, probably the most, uh, the most challenging one is the fact that we already have some successful metaverse implementation, which means that there are people who made commitment and, you know, um, convincing them to um, dispose of what they, uh, they made is not necessarily uh, easy. And finally, uh, we don't have some key technologies yet. And... Uh, for those that we have, uh, it's not clear which technology will eventually be separate. So we are in a very difficult situation. So here is where the um, Empire Roadmap to Metaverse Interoperability comes in. 
uh, milestone one is what we uh, approved in uh, in January this year. <coughs> um, so this is part of the Empire Metaverse Model uh, Project, Empire MMM, um, and we had this first milestone. Uh, the basic elements are: don't try and define what the metaverse is, but uh, collect the functionalities that potentially required by metaverse users, and uh, of course organize them. Um, and um, if they are different needs, that we'll serve them by profile. But we want to collect the functionality first. Um, this first uh, document, uh, technical um, report, includes definitions and assumptions applicable to the project. The potential sources that can generate functionalities. I mean, we wanted to, to uh, be as, as wide as possible in collecting functionalities. Then uh, we collected quite a few, about 130, uh, and um, we organized them and we commented them. And then uh, we made an analysis of the main enabling technologies as to see what we have and what uh, uh, we miss and how we can um, uh, orderly incorporate the new technologies. Um, Let's uh, talk about uh, another, um, another topic, which is uh, technology profiles and uh, functionality profiles. First of all, um, we have to say what uh, a, profile, uh, a profile is. I mean, um, you, you can typically, you have one standard and uh, that contains a lot of things, and then uh, you define a subset of those things, and that becomes a profile. I mean, in the case of MPEG-2, but MPEG-4 as well, and the later profile as well, um, the profile, uh, we had the, the main profile that, uh, that was, uh, I mean, the one that made uh, many people happy. Then you have uh, maybe a, a baseline profile that uh, is, was less performing, but still made uh, some people happy. And then you had other, um, other, other profiles. The, the notion of level is also important uh, because uh, uh, you, you have a profile, I mean, the, the technologies are there, but for instance, the, the video resolution is different or the number of audio channels is different, but essentially uh, the technologies are there. Um, so the definition of level is a subdivision of profile indicating the completeness of the user experience, and you will see what kind uh, of use we will make of this definition in, in our project. Therefore, if we have profiles and levels, developers can select uh, the profile or level that is most suitable to them. And of course, they don't have 100% interoperability, but quite uh, uh, a high level of interoperability. So uh, the situation that we have is that today, as we have just said, we don't have um, uh, uh, technologies to build a technology profile, but we can develop functionality profile. Uh, because the point is this, um, and uh, this is one of the, um, I mean, let me say bad things of standardization, that people jump into standards because, uh, into standards and technologies because uh, they have, of course, an IP uh, on that, which is very good, but that kind of distracts uh, the definition of the standard. Because first, we, we really have to agree on what the standard should do. And, um, and functionality profiles uh, allows us uh, to uh, start uh, subdividing uh, the, uh, the application domain uh, into subsets. And we are about uh, to reach the second milestone because uh, we intended to publish uh, the current working draft 0.3 uh, on the 19th of February. So uh, functional operation uh, model uh, is what we are going to talk about. And this is a main uh, achievement of, of the second milestone. So this is a figure that uh, does not intend to um, uh, represent the full uh, scope of, um, of, a, of a metaverse implementation, but it gives some ideas so that we, uh, we create more easily a common vocabulary. So on the, on the right hand side, we have universe, which is uh, the real world, and we have U environments. Uh, U environments uh, um, contain humans, contain objects, contain devices, 
and you will see on, on the top one here, uh, object, human, and devices. Um, so the devices allow to establish a connection uh, between the environment and, um, and, and the service, and the service uh, is uh, designed to um, create an um, M instance that is subdivided in an environment. Inside an M environment, we can have uh, objects again, and we can have a, a users, and uh, users user don't, uh, don't, uh, don't appear because the users are um, a digital representation of humans, but they not, do not include, say, an avatar. So the avatar is what we call here persona, and here we subdivide two cases when, uh, when the persona is um, a good repres visual representation of the human here, and uh, when the persona is uh, instead a, um, an autonomous uh, uh, process. Same uh, for the objects. So as much uh, uh, about uh, this, and let's go to another uh, important point. So we assume that an M, an M instance is made of processes that interact within an M instance and also outside an M instance. And we have defined uh, three classes of process. One, this is the most important, of course, is users. Users are processes that represent the human um, in two ways, either using data from the real world and we call them U locations, and uh, via autonomous agents. Then we have devices, and devices are processes that interconnect a U location to an M location and vice versa. And uh, then we have in general services that are processes providing functionalities. All these elements were uh, present in the uh, previous uh, figure. Uh, an important point, so how much does an MM instance interoperate with another instance? Well, it depends. If uh, its processes interoperate, they do, and, uh, and if not, it does not. Um, of course, not necessarily all processes need to uh, interoperate, but uh, uh, those are the interoperated define the level of interoperability of an MM instance with another instance. A process, uh, and this is another important point, performs action on items or requests another process to perform action on items. Action is, uh, is rather clear, I hope, but I, uh, maybe it's not. But item is another foundational element uh, of the model because it is data with attached metadata, possibly including the rights uh, that an action can act on. So this is a, a simple uh, description. So we have uh, three M instances here. Uh, each of them has uh, processes. The process is interacted between um, uh, themselves in an M instance, but may also interoperate with other processes in other M instances. Okay, now we start uh, a metaverse walkthrough. I, uh, I warn you that it will be a little bit heavy, but you know, uh, we are talking about something that uh, uh, has to become um, a technical specification that can be implemented because uh, uh, our ambition is to make things that can be implemented. This is not just theory. So the basic operation is uh, process number one, request process number two, to perform actions on items. Therefore, process number two receives the request and possibly execute requests if process one has the right to call process two and, uh, and, and request it to execute actions. Therefore, process two responds either with the result of the execution of the request or uh, errors or inability to perform uh, the request because uh, rights are missing or insufficient. Then the processes and the item may be in the same or in different instances. So a process may be here and uh, an item can be in, in another place. 
rights, I have started already using this word, which is quite fundamental again, express the ability to perform an action on an item. And uh, another important point, uh, which is notation here, is that uh, we have decided to prefix the actions uh, to indicate uh, where the action is performed. So MM means that is something that is happening in the metaverse. Uh, UM is something that moves from the universe to the metaverse and MU, uh, metaverse to universe. So this facilitates the understanding of what we are talking about. The devices are designed to connect human and object to one or more M locations. And here we make a first application of our terminology. Uh, the meaning of render should be rather clear. UM render means that you have a scene and um, you take the, to capture the, the scene with the sensors and you render in the metaverse. This is quite a, a, a long process. We'll say more about this. Uh, the U MU render is quite easier because uh, here you, you capture a, uh, a, 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 an entity. Entity is uh, uh, something that I will say in a minute uh, uh, through the actuators and uh, um, uh, renders it in the, um, in the physical world. <laughs> Imagine that uh, you wanted to wish uh, to, you want to register on a, an M instance. Um, you have to provide, or you may be asked to provide, not, that, not necessarily that uh, is a requirement, a subset of their user data. User data are defined here. Here we make two examples, uh, their avatars and possibly the ID of a wallet, but can be more than one. Um, so a user exists from the moment its real twin human has, has, is registered. And it has a right to add in an instance for which a human has an account, uh, depending on what the account, um, what the rights of the account grants. And uh, another point that different users of the same account may have different rights. And that means this is governed by rules, express the ob obligation of, um, of the humans and the, the terms of operation of the users. Um, the rules may prevent users in an M instance to interact with another M instance, or may decide that not to enforce uh, the rights on some action performed on some items. I mean, this is, uh, is it, we are providing technologies that then implementers can uh, decide to implement and activate or not activate depending on their needs. Next point, um, we have uh, the, um, uh, the, and the notion of identifier. This is obviously is critical. An identifier is an item that uniquely associate, this is uniquely associated to a particular item. Uh, like I said, an avatar is an item. An item can be identified by more than one identifier. That is possible. And uh, the structure proposed is uh, quite powerful because uh, an item is prefixed by the ID of the instance. And uh, in case it is um, uh, presented somewhere in, in an M location, then uh, the um, ID of the M location is inserted between uh, the ID of the M instance and the item ID. So we have the same item, but the ID is different because one is stored in the server and the other is uh, um, displayed somewhere. So let's uh, go back to our uh, list here. So we have seen uh, interoperability and profiles in the functional operation model. Now we are going to dig a, a little further in actions and items. So here is a first list of actions on items. So first of all, um, uh, we introduced the notion of entity um, as a, um, an item that can be perceived. Of course, this is very, very important, but it, it is also not the only type of item that we have. We have uh, identify six types. We'll talk about a few. 
So these are some actions that can be performed. You can author uh, an entity. Uh, MMED, uh, MMED means that uh, you, you have, say, an avatar and you place it somewhere, and you have an object and you place it somewhere. But the fact that you place it doesn't mean that uh, this, uh, this object or this avatar is, uh, is visible. Uh, you have to enable that. Uh, and then when you don't want uh, the, the entity to be visible, uh, then you uh, disable. Uh, embed is the combination of add and enable because uh, it is very much used. Uh, we have uh, the notion of capture, the notion of you am animate. You can understand that uh, if you want to animate an avatar, you have to pick data from the universe and you have to bring it to the metaverse so that uh, it can animate. Authenticate is an object need, uh, interpret. You, you are seeing an object and you don't want, don't want to know more about that object inform and, uh, and, and more. Um, this uh, is track is another powerful um, action. It's a, it's a composite action because uh, first uh, you add a persona at an M location with a certain uh, um, orientation. Uh, then um, then uh, you animate the persona from taking data from the universe and then you bring back the animated uh, avatar to uh, the, the universe so that uh, your uh, human twin can see you. Here are um, the list of current entities, object, model, model is an avatar for instance, scene, that's uh, rather clear, event is, um, is what happens in, uh, in a, an M, M location uh, in a certain period of time, and the experience is exactly what you have perceived um, in the event. So you, that is, uh, is another uh, entity that is, we have found it useful to define. Um, what uh, is the function of the device? So let's go into more uh, into um, practicing uh, the, um, the language. So a device can UM render a scene from the universe to the metaverse, and it does quite a few things because first it captures, then it sends the data um, and device data to the, uh, to the uh, metaverse, but to a user in the metaverse. The, the, the user creates an entity from data metadata and then embeds the entity at an location with a, a special attitude. The point here of uh, creating an entity from data metadata is that uh, we assume that uh, data and metadata coming from whatever reason into the metaverse have first to be converted into the format that is used by the metaverse. Then um, we have uh, the, the opposite from the metaverse to the universe, and this is much simpler because the, the, the entity is, uh, is centered to the device and then the device simply actuates uh, the, um, the, the entity to the real world. Example of financial items, we have assets, definition of assets, ledger, the list of transactions, the provenance is the list of transactions you should own a particular asset. Um, transaction, I mean, this is quite a complicated uh, uh, item, uh, but it's clear that uh, it does represent the change of accounts and the rights on the seller and the buyer and potentially uh, on the service uh, facilitating the transaction in, say, a marketplace. Then we have the value, an amount that is expressed in a currency, and a wallet, a, a container of currency units. So this is the full list of, um, of uh, actions. We have identified the 28 of them. I'm not going to spend more time. I think that we have press, practiced uh, these actions sufficiently, but you see that there is more that we did not say. Uh, and this is the table of, of items. So we have identified uh, 40. And um, um, again, uh, there are many more than we have used. So these request uh, uh, authenticate the discovering for the interpret. And uh, the response to this is the, is the uh, item that is uh, sent in a request to authenticate an object. And uh, this is uh, simply the response. And then we have the data types, uh, which are data that are used by item, action and items. So we have an address, an amount, currency, 
personal status takes too long to to uh, talk about this uh, point um spatial attitude uh, and time so these are the data types let's go back to our uh, structure so we have um, interoperability function operational model action and item and now let's go to payload and format so this is a rather technical i will give just a, a short overview but just to show you uh, the maturity of um, of what we have uh, developed so this is the payload of a request made by a process to another process. So we have a source and the destination, then the, the action requested. Uh, we can have more than one item uh, on which the action is to, is to be made. Potentially the items are in, in, the, in a serve, what could be very well uh, at a specific location that can be a virtual location or a physical location. And the same for... Um, the location of the output um, item and the outrights are okay. I am I have created some uh, some items, so I have uh, accessibility to sign. What are the rights that I have on that item, or what is the right that I'm requesting to have on on that uh, item? So this is the semantics. I think that uh, we. We don't have uh, necessarily the, the need to go through it. I think it's uh, rather clear. Uh, and here is the response of um, the payload of the response and uh, some semantics. As, as you see, uh, if it is success, uh, here you have uh, the out item and uh, you will be given the IDs of the uh, items created or, or processed or made available. And here we have uh, different types of errors that uh, it can happen. Uh, well, the obvious one is that you don't have enough rights to uh, request to do that, but it can be other um, other errors as well. So, what is the format of the item? Well, uh, this this is important because uh, item is composed of data metadata. This is what's said, but that um, metadata may also contain rights. I mean, rights in uh, in many uh, cases are um, a, an essential ingredient to be able to operate uh, in a metaverse instance. Then um, <coughs> a process can create an item from data metadata. And um, we have seen briefly this, um, and there's a, a process because uh, we have to convert data and metadata into uh, a format that is recognized by uh, the metaverse. We have identified so far 19 data, um, metadata types. Um, and what is important, uh, I mean, it is obvious because this is an assumption that we don't deal with data formats. So in general, we don't provide data format. We assume that they are data format. We, have, we start defining some functional requirement, but the work is far from complete. And these are the, uh, all the possible metadata that can be attached to, uh, to a, an item. Uh, of course, we are not going to uh, see them all. Okay, so uh, summary again, interoperability and profiles, functional operational model, actions and items, payloads and format. So these is the technology that allow us to make the real step that is needed. And uh, the real step is, so we have use cases and, uh, and we want to see if the methodology works. And this is what, uh, uh, so we have seven, seven use cases. And here you see the, the methodology. So you see, for instance, author, this is one verb, a track, transact, so these are all verbs that we have uh, action that we have seen. So here is a virtual lecture. I will go through this example and then I will briefly scan uh, the others. Um, so we have uh, uh, the manager. This is a school manager. Uh, authors a virtual room and embeds the virtual room. Embeds means putting some wire and making it visible. Then we have a student student uh, tracks um, uh, itself um, and uh, at a certain place uh, in the metaverse 
then makes a transaction because uh, in order to attend a virtual lecture, it needs to pay. Then it embeds itself in the classroom. You see this met, uh, metaverse location uh, here is 2.1 and this one is 2.2. And then it disables, I mean, it, it stops be, be making it, uh, itself visible at uh, the original place. The same happens for the teacher with the difference that um, the teacher now start making uh, um, the lecture. And so it embeds a 3D model at a certain location in the classroom and calls a service to animate the 3D model. Um, so then we assume that uh, the, the lecture is finished. So the manager makes the transactions. The student has acquired the right to store the experience. So it, it has a file somewhere uh, where, in, where at any time uh, he can go and, uh, and see exactly what he experienced during the lecture. And then uh, simply now it go, goes back home and the disable uh, the visibility of uh, its persona uh, at, uh, in the classroom. And the same does the teacher. So, uh, virtual meeting. So here we have uh, um, a meeting. We have a, a, a meeting manager. Uh, we have participant one and participant two. So what uh, is uh, <coughs> what is interesting here is is the fact that uh, um, uh, I mean it 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 calls this verb interpret. Interpret is a very general action that allows you to request the metaverse, for instance, to make a translation of what um, uh, of a particular um, speech object. So let me go quickly. See, this is hybrid working. We have a real worker and a virtual worker. Here we have esports a tournament. Uh, here we have virtual performance. So you have a performer, you have a participant, you have an organizer. Um, this is a, a case of uh, application of uh, 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 AR, uh, an AR tourist guide. And finally, we have a virtual dance where uh, here the teacher and the students uh, um, uh, use the ability to sense, uh, to have tactile experiences so that they can really uh, dance. So the, the bottom line of all this is that we have developed a, a rather sophisticated powerful, complete uh, methodology, and we have applied it to some uh, interesting use cases, and uh, um, the, it is possible to have a, um, an appropriate uh, description of the use cases. Functionality profiles. So this is our conclusion, that we have a baseline profile. We'll say in a minute what, what it is. Then we have the management profile. Why it's called like that? Because the baseline profile has no right, no, no, no registration, no nothing. I mean, but, but you can uh, um, enter a, a, a location, you can do things there, you can chat. It's what we call a, a, a hangout profile. But the management profile, that's a serious profile where you have... A, uh, registration, you have rights, uh, you have uh, uh, all, all the infrastructure that enables you to have control of, um, of what you are, are and what you have in the metaverse. The next one is a finance profile. This is designed for people who are interested in, uh, in say, in, in, uh, in trading, in trading NFTs. And finally, we have the I profile that, con that contains uh, um, everything. So what can be done? You can author um, entities, for instance, model. You can embed the person and entity, um, and uh, then you can animate them. You can um, MU render, which is from the metaverse to a universe. You can do the opposite. You can send information from different uh, uh, parties. And finally, you can disable. So these is the list of uh, actions, items, and data types for at the baseline profile. So actions, well, the actions are, we need quite a few. About a two, um, two thirds of the actions, the total actions are needed to implement this. But uh, for the items, we need about one half and uh, um, for data types, a handful. 
conclusions. So uh, the content of the technical report number two is definitions, the metaverse operation model, the basic metaverse elements, actions, item, data types. So these are uh, the, uh, the language that we have developed. Then we have applied the language to represent use cases, successful, I believe. And uh, we have defined initial functionality profiles. So the conclusions are that um, we have demonstrated that the first two milestones of the Empire Roadmap are feasible. Um, we have identified four functionality profiles and identified the functionality supporting them. And uh, clearly, more profiles are likely necessary. We don't think that this is the end, this is the beginning, if we add more actions and items. But now, two words about the next steps. Because um, we have accomplished the first two steps uh, of what is uh, we expect to be a long trap. So let's see uh, what we have done. Milestone number one is provided metaverse functionality. And with that, we have kind of defined the scope of the metaverse. Milestone number two is the functional operation model. And we have identified actions and items. Um, with that, we have validated the operation model and we have identified four initial functional profiles. So what's going to be next? Milestone number three, we want to develop a metaverse architecture. We want to develop metaverse API. You understand that uh, the, uh, the request and, um, and the response uh, payload that we have defined, uh, this is the next, is the first step to define Metaverse API. And uh, as a result, we expect that to be able to um, have implementation of non-interoperable emintices, and they are not interoperable because we still don't have the data semantics. Without that, uh, no interoperability is possible, even without, uh, even with uh, um, a um, um, mediated interoperability. Number four, the data functional requirements. So this will be the real, the real thing, because with that, we can uh, make implementation that have mediated interoperability. So these implementations don't assume they have common technologies, but they can get uh, interpretation of, uh, of, of the other guy um, by means uh, of a conversion service. Then we will have number five, which is the tech, um, the, the contents of the, uh, the table of contents of the metaverse specification. As I, I repeat, table of content, not the metaverse specification. And this will be important because we will identify all the technology that are needed. No, not, we will not say any, uh, that we select any. Simply we are saying, we need these. And finally, for this phase, the Empire technology mapping. So what do we mean by this? So we have quite a few technologies and um, we, we wanted to map our technology into the table of content. So request for action. So there's uh, this technical report. It is open for comments until the 14th, uh, um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the 17th of April. Anybody can send comments to the secretariat. Comments will be considered by the group that is in charge of this, uh, of this document. Non-members may join the next meeting. Uh, that, will be, that will be on the 14th of April, uh, Friday, uh, two Fridays from now. And, um, and then uh, the final text of the technical report is expected to be finally adopted as a technical report on the 19th of April. So, Thank you for your participation. We look forward to working with you in this exciting Empire project. So this is our logo, and this is our motto, join Empire, share the fun, build the future. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention.